want to start with asking everybody a question. What is an effective person? Is it someone who gets the job done, right or wrong? Is, is it satisfying or gratifying to yourself or other parties? It's defined as successful in producing a desired or intended result. My name is April Levar, and I want to talk to you today about one of the foundations of success, which is effectiveness. Being goal-oriented here at IRE, I was trying to seek a way to calibrate how I'm being effective and if I'm being effective or not. And is there new ways and techniques that I can implement in my life, at work, at school, and in my personal life that I can become more effective? So I ran across the seven habits of highly effective people. It has inspired millions of people across the globe, including myself. And so I want to talk to you today about some of the highlights in this book that I found inspiring and some new techniques, including what is a habit, what is maturity, and getting to the seven habits. So what is a habit? A habit in this book is defined as the intersection of knowledge, skill, and desire. Knowledge is the what to, skills is the how to, and desire is the motivation or the want to. In order to create a habit, it requires work in all three dimensions. Um, we not only have to see the change, we have to recognize and be the change um, that we want to see um, to make more positive goals and achieve success, to find our purpose and to find our passion. So maturity. Maturity is a natural law of growth in us physically as humans. We start out as dependent, as an infant, because um, we require people to nurture us and care for us in order to grow. And when we become independent, we can learn to do things for ourselves, such as drive our own cars. But just because that we're physically mature does not mean we're emotionally or mentally mature. They're not one and the same. So. Emotionally or mentally mature, um, dependent people um, tend to say you, and they use others to get what they want. Independent people tend to say I. They use themselves to get what they want. But the idea of interdependence, people tend to say we, that it's the idea that we can work together to achieve success, it is the idea that we can accomplish more together than I can alone, even when I'm at my best. So we go along this continuum here. We have to go step by step. Someone who is dependent cannot just choose to be interdependent because they still cannot rely on themselves to get what they want or achieve their goals. <clears throat> so let's get to the seven habits. The first three habits are more of a private victory, and they're looking within yourself to um, see how you interact with others. And when we get to public victory, we learn how to work with others, and a renewal is what encompasses everything, so we can move up this maturity continuum from dependence to independence and then interdependence. Habit number one, be proactive. This means more than just taking initiative. As humans, we are responsible for our own actions. Um, so we have the ability to choose our response. So whatever stimulus we get from the outside world, we have the ability to choose that governs our response according to our self-awareness, our consciousness, and independent will. So our behavior is a function of our decisions and not our conditions. If it were a function of our conditions, it is because we have chosen by independent will or default to, to let that empower us or control us. Number two, begin with the end in mind. This means to start with a clear understanding of where you want to go, your destination. This is to better gauge where you are now so you can take the necessary steps um, to achieve your goals. Oftentimes, across many walks of life, many careers, um, people want to achieve higher recognition, higher income, 
but oftentimes our, dri our drive to achieve our goals it, um, blinds us to what really matters the most. So we have to make sure that the steps that we take to achieve that goal and make this an effective habit are um, aligning us with that goal and are valuable. Number three, put first things first. This is more of a time management habit to see how we organize and execute our priorities. We can divide our priorities into two different categories, urgence and importance, and we can rate them from urgent important to not urgent and not important. Urgent matters require immediate attention, and important matters require initiative and proactivity. So we can write our own program or plan to execute these priorities, whether it's daily planning or weekly planning. Um, but we not only have to write our own program, we have to run the program and live the program in order to make this a highly effective habit. Number four, think win-win. This is a, the philosophy of human interaction that seeks mutual benefits in all parties involved where we can all agree upon the solutions and the decisions to make a commitment towards the action plan. Oftentimes we think of life as win or lose, strong or weak, but this is fundamentally flawed because it focuses on position and power rather than on principle. And that one person's um, success is not achieved at the expense or the exclusion of others. Number five, first seek to understand, then to be understood. This is the basis of character and how we communicate to others. So we're taught how to talk, write, and tell our opinions our whole lives, but are we ever taught how to listen? In order to truly understand someone, we have to understand that everyone has different perspectives, different backgrounds, different experiences that they bring to the table. Most people do not seek or do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. So we have to become more empathetic listeners where we can um, more relate to a frame of reference um, that the other person is coming from to truly be effective. And when we seek to be understood, we have to try to understand someone else because people are not willing to usually take our advice if we don't seek to understand them. So when we seek to be understood, we have to be credible, logical, and empathetic. Number six, synergize. This is the idea that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, which mathematically does not make sense, but if you have two people speaking to one another on a team, that interaction between the two is a part in itself, which will equal three. So this is where we um, empower us and unify us to seek um, maximum beneficial results. And to, syner or to communicate synergistically, we have to open our mind to new alternatives and new options. And habit number seven is sharpen the saw. This is what encompasses all of the other habits and makes all others possible. It's enhancing and motivating the greatest asset that you have, which is yourself. And this is actively exercising um, areas and motivations in all four of these categories, the physical, spiritual, mental, and social. The greatest, most important, or more, most powerful um, investment that you can make in your life is an investment in yourself. Thank you.